Distance education in the United States has a historical background of both events and technological development. The integration of congressional acts, social movements, and growing technology has formed distance education as we understand it today. Let's briefly review its history. Though public schools had been established in the United States during the 17th century, they did not become more widespread until after the Revolution when the Articles of Confederation were ratified. In 1781, the Articles gave more control to local governments, allowing for free, open education within townships. Soon after, the Industrial Revolution was in full swing, and technology and transportation was widely expanding. One of the most notable inventions of this time was the train. People in the United States were becoming more mobile and connected. It is during this era that the Lyceum movement is born. Important to adult education, Lyceums consisted of groups of entertainers, lecturers, and readers that would travel to other towns and states in order to carry out performances and debates. In the following decades, the United States found itself divided in civil war. However, education was not put to the wayside. In 1862, the federal government established its first form of aid to higher education through the Morrill Act. Under this act, new western states were able to establish land-grant institutions that emphasized the studies of agriculture and mechanic arts. Meanwhile, the telegraph had already emerged and began a new era of communication. Not long after the Civil War, Alexander Graham Bell introduced the telephone, further connecting the American people. Just a year following the telephone came the phonograph. Synchronous and asynchronous communications became more instant among the populations. In the Reconstruction period, another movement in adult education transpired on the shores of Lake Chautauqua in New York State. Similar to the Lyceum groups, assemblies of lecturers, teachers, entertainers, speakers, and musicians gathered for eight weeks to perform to the public during the summer. Eventually, the organization began correspondence courses through mail and circuits throughout the country, which were popular until the early 20th century. At the same time, Ford was selling millions of his Model T automobile, further facilitating travel for the group and its audiences. By the time the First World War was over, the radio broadcast and film industries had already been established in American societies. Radio broadcast and film made information more available to Americans. In the years preceding the stock market crash of 1929, talkie films, during which sound was synced to a moving picture, became popular. By World War II, film was used for didactic training movies. In the 1950s, television brought moving pictures to homes. Educational programs, such as Sunrise Semester, broadcast in living room. Eventually, these new technologies became extensions in classrooms. With new media formally entering the field of education, educators saw the need to re-examine learning theories. Behaviorism was a heavily employed theory emphasizing kill and drill and rote memorization. During the 1960s, as technology continued to expand due to the space age, new theories emerged, including constructionism. Seymour Poppert was particularly renowned for considering the impact of new technologies in constructionism. As technology developed in the 1970s and 80s, microcomputers and computers also called for a shift in theories. Instructional design was more learner-centered and user-oriented. The concept of needs assessment and task analysis emerged, and nonlinear instruction evolved. As distance education became more popular in institutions, instructors understood the importance of knowing the audience or the learner. Deterministic theorists such as Moore and Holmberg addressed the distance learning environment. Holmberg even acknowledged the need to revise his original theories due to the growth of technology. He brought to light the importance of guiding dialogic conversations and building empathy between the instructor and learners. Through this approach, learners are better able to engage with content in a constructional manner. In his distance transactional theory, Moore explained how learners in distance education face two types of distances, physical distance and psychological distance with the content. He further claimed that new media, such as teleconferencing, created new types of dialogues. According to Moore, Instructors need to overcome the delivery environment by narrowing psychological distances through multilateral relationships among the instructor and learners. 
Distance education has rapidly changed throughout the years, but its history closely intertwined with politics, technology, and cultural shifts has not. Its timeline will continue with more changes as time progresses.